to the Charles the Face of Trade Tables, and we're here with our uh, teammate of Trade Tables, John Gibbons. He uh, got top eight at the regional in Salem today. So, uh, just real quick, what were you playing today? Uh, I played White Horse Runic today. All right, all right. And so, um, I guess before we go completely into the deck profile, uh, you want a quick rundown on the matches here? Uh, a lot of Tenpai. Out of the eight rounds, I played five Tenpai. Um, there was one Vanquished Soul, one Snake Eye, and then uh, a Branded. All right, all right. Well, let's go ahead and get this deck profile. All right. Uh, so, I really like the White Force cards, and so I was trying desperately to make something work. And the Runic stuff just seemed to have the longevity to actually go through a full event. Um, so we're playing the three Silvera. Sylvie. Uh, I despise this card. Uh, if it wasn't for it being runic to where this is uh, like the best normal summon, this is a card I never want to see. Um, we went three of the Rusia. I really just wanted to max out on all my level four tuners because just seeing one of them meant that I was going to go for my full white force combo and be fine. Um, the non-tuner white force I played was two LZ. Once you get one in circulation, you don't really need another one. And so I'd rather not see a whole bunch of them. Ironically enough, my one loss today was because in game three, I didn't see any white force, but even still, I don't think I'd change the ratios. Uh, the only spell and trap that I play for the White Forest is one Woes. The spell is really bad in the Runic stuff because you just, by the time you can activate it, you don't need to activate it because you already have access to your White Forest combo. So I'd rather just play the one and play more spells. Uh, for the Runic, it's all pretty standard. Uh, two Fountain, three Tip, three Freezing, three Destruction, three Flashing, uh, three Slumber. Um, I played one Dispelling and one Smite and Storm. A lot of people have been moving up to two Dispelling. However, instead of playing the second Dispelling, I opted to play a third Rusia from what a lot of people have been doing online with their deck list. So I felt like it was just fine. There wasn't ever a time I was like, man, I really need more Runic. There have been times where I really needed the Tuner. Um, that's it for the Runics for non-engine. Um, one Talents. This is a card that I absolutely love. However, I feel like it's dead more than not. The one, it came up pretty nifty in a few matchups, but a lot of times I was just ditching it because if you end up really wanting it back to activate, you can just sit there and add it back off the synchro. Um, Pack and everyone had been switching to a more turbo version with the three upstarts, the terraforming and the chicken game. And I really liked that because I was struggling with some consistency stuff when I was just playing more like stun cards. Um, drawing into this stuff was really cool. Being able to add back an upstart off of the Diabelle Synchro basically means that you're going to draw an extra two because I'm usually making it with Coral Dragon, uh, which is just really cool. And life points don't ever really matter. Um, I went into time once today and it was my one draw. <coughs> so. Uh, for the traps, three skill drain. Yeah, it's gonna go to one. I'm gonna be fine with that. Um, <laughs> in, in most matchups, I side out at least two of them. Um, but Tempai is the one matchup, I'm like, man, I really need it. And fortunately, that's all I played. Um, a lot of even leads. Yet, I think I only resolved one every time I saw it because I either won my die rolls or I played against Tenpai and they made me go first anyway. Uh, and then the one time that it came up and I lost my die roll, it was in my hand, and I was able to resolve it on Snake Eyes. It didn't really get me the win. There was still a lot of stuff I had to power through, but it definitely helped make it so it was a lot more manageable in the field. <coughs> um, for the extra deck, it's all, for the most part, pretty standard. Uh, three Hugin. You need level twos. If I could play more Hugin, I'd play more Hugin. Um, the only times that I don't want more Hugin is almost never actually. Uh, if anything, I always actually wish I had more so that I had more destruction protection because that's half of it as well. Uh, there's a, been a lot of board breakers, a lot of Raigeki's, lightning storms, dusters, and so being able to just chain a runic to summon is really strong. Oftentimes I go through two in, in the main combo and so having an extra one's really nice. Um, yeah. Uh, one Jerry. Uh, Jerry came up a couple times for all of his different effects, uh, including once where he was just a dark level four because it allowed me to make a Chaos Angel. And then uh, it was actually against that Snake Eye player. 
where I had to sit for a couple turns on that snake guy just so I could rebuild my hand up with material so I could actually try and get something before he got to a, an imperm. Uh, I played one Moonin. Uh, I think I gained a thousand life points off it in a random match, but for the most part it's there as a level three so that you can end up making uh, Dawn Dragster. It turns out that Dawn Dragster is really hard for a lot of decks to out, and being able to just give you that inherent evenly protection is really strong, especially since you will oftentimes have the ability to summon out one of your tuners for free, and that plus this is a uh, free Dragster. So. Um, other synchros, the shrimp, the silvera, uh, the oh, Arciella and the silvera. Um, I didn't resolve silvera once today. Um, I only made it once and that was to do piercing damage. Uh, other than that, it didn't come up. Uh, this I used a lot more primarily so I could set up the bridge to get into the Dawn Dragster. But almost every time, if I already have X to my trap, I'm making the Coral Dragon to draw more cards. The more I can draw, the better. Uh, last level six I played was a new addition. I re-put in the Tri-Edge. I'd cut it a while ago to play a Scarlight because I wanted to have something to win in time because people don't know when to scoop to Runic and will sit there for like 30 minutes when I won anyway. Um, but I found myself really wanting to Link Climb into, or uh, Synchro Climb into my level 10s. And I couldn't really do that because the easiest things for me to throw out were level four tuners or level sixes, which were all tuners as well. So having a non-tuner level six was really strong. Draw effect, really cool. Uh, being a light allowed for easy Chaos Angels, uh, which was the next one. Uh, on top of that, we played one Chinging. This card was MVP all day and always will be. With the amount of banishing that I'm doing with the Runics, this card is just near impossible to out. And oftentimes I sit on both of these with uh, light and dark on this, so they're both unaffected by monster effects and they can't be destroyed by battle. Uh, assuming that they actually could destroy it by battle uh, with the gaining. Uh, the last synchro was of course the Diabelle. Uh, kind of the heart and soul of the entire deck. It adds back your spells and traps. It cheats out synchros pretty well. That's just kind of what it is. And then uh, Little Knight. I made Little Knight maybe once today. Um, it didn't really come up, primarily because I don't really like clog in my extra monster zone, so I have access to more runics. Uh, it's kind of hard to get out, or rid, but sometimes you just got to get that extra removal. Um, for the side deck... Uh, okay, so for starters, because I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but I actually really like the theory of the three emergency provisions and dogwoods. Um, again, people are going to sit there and they're going to end up being the ones that are calling the shots on whether or not they're going to scoop or not. And so I wanted to have a game plan for time. They went in one time because the game one went like 30 minutes. Um, I wanted, and they're also playing Fiendsmith, so I wanted to be able to not just lose in time to Alacrima. Um, on top of that, this card's really strong in being able to evenly under things like Desiree. Because you can activate the evenly, they'll chain Desiree, and then you just chain provisions to send it to the grave. Not only is it going to break their board, but you also gain life points. Um, <laughs> really cool. Uh, I resolved this once today, and I didn't resolve this at all today. Because I actually didn't really put them in. I only put them in if the game had less than 20 minutes. Uh, which wasn't most. Most of my entire rounds were like 30 minutes long. So. Uh, three Dark Ruler. These didn't go in at all because I didn't play any U-Bell, but they're primarily there for U-Bell. <laughs> uh, being able to turn off everything so I can hopefully break the board real cool. Oh, um, so that's why you got top eight. You didn't have to play against U-Bell today, huh? <laughs> They also would go in against Snake Eyes if I was going second post side, but the one Snake Eye I ended up playing against was my one draw. Ah, um, and good. that was primarily because I had the ability to kill him and go for a game, but there was like a minute and a half left in time, and so I'd rather sit there, continue to break his board, make sure he couldn't kill me, and then win in times so that we could have a draw rather than risk him or getting through his siding in time to start the next game and then just lack of money me for game. Mm. So a uh, guaranteed draw instead of a really risky okay. <laughs> loss. So <laughs> yep. it was what I wanted to do. Uh, I did put in power filters. Ooh, God, more you bell hate. Jesus. Uh, <laughs> you bell hate, snake guy hate. <laughs> It's kind of just all over the place. It kind of slowed me down a little bit, 
but against the Snake Eye especially, they can't do anything. Like, everything's super itty bitty. You Bell can't do anything that I just hit a point where I was like, cool, we'll sit on one. And I didn't even sit on one because I drew one on their turn off my Runix and I drew one for turn. So I just went, cool, here's two. Hopefully you don't have a Cosmic. <laughs> um, and then I slowly cleared them myself so that I could draw more cards because the second that that's useless against me, I just sack it. Um, my generic going first is generally two Black Goat and one Tikaboo. <coughs> Uh, Tikaboo is almost, well, not even almost, it is strictly here for Tempai and uh, Ubel. Mm -hmm. And I just needed something that I could guarantee to put in and take out my even lease. And so I opted for these. This card is just really good against whatever because you can just hit whatever you need to. Um, yeah, it's one of, this is the only thing that I also put in against Tempai going first or second because I don't really care which. If they go first, I'm not gonna be able to kill them. So I just break their board and then set up mine as if I had went first uh, and then go from there. So that was that. Was that. X11. All right. one. All right, well, thank you for that, their profile, guys. And this is Charles, the face of Trade Tables, signing out. Peace.